Hi, I'm Will Burnick. And I'm Keith Halperin, and this is Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. This week's program is Autism and the uh, College Internship Program with our guest, uh, Kaya Banker. Uh, first of all, Will, it looks like your hair's grown out a little bit. I'm, I'm glad you noticed, but... But it isn't hair. It's my it's my it's my Halloween costume. This year I'm a werewolf. I've got a mask and a vest. Do you do werewolves before? Nope. This is my first year. The first time I'm I'm a werewolf. Very very good. Um, I used to have hair like that in the '70s, but you know what they say: hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> you see why I do this job and not comedy. Anyway, Will, tell us about your shirt. Well, well, this week's shirt is my Cal State East Bay shirt. I went to Cal State East Bay. I graduated from Cal State East Bay. I did interdisciplinary studies, and I st and I still volunteer in the drama department. And I'm I go up to Cal State East Bay from time to time, and I'm looking to perform to perform up there, in some some time. Thank you, thank you. Um, Will, would you take it from there? Gladly. What What is CIP? Well, um, first I want to say thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. Uh, college Internship Program is a program that's uh, established for uh, students on the spectrum or any kind of learning differences to provide them any kind of support uh, anywhere from uh, wellness, career, academic, social skills, uh, independent living skills. Um, we have a very comprehensive program. Uh, when students come to our program, they get that kind of comprehensive program, and also they live in our um, uh, apartment building. And uh, the whole program started about 30 years ago in Massachusetts uh, by our founder, Dr. Michael McMahon. Um, and uh, throughout time, our uh, program branched out in the nation, going to the um, New York area, um, and then Florida. We have one in um, Indiana, and then we have two in California, one in Long Beach, and one in Berkeley. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very strong, comprehensive program that have been around. And the Berkeley site have been around for the past, uh, I want to say, eight years now, eight, nine years. What is your background? How did you get into the field of autism? Good question. Uh, well. Uh, it's interesting. My background, I received my undergrad uh, degree in uh, microbial biology and genetics mm. and uh, my master's in um, public health administration. Um, the, the whole process of getting to the autism field started when I was doing my undergrad. So originally I'm from Ethiopia, so my undergrad study started kind of late. Um, so during that process, I had to uh, find a job to earn some sort of money to pay for my school and so forth. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine referred me to the college uh, internship program to start there as a tutor. Um, so about six years ago, I applied for a um, tutoring position there. I started working as a tutor there. And, and from there, I just enjoyed working with our student population. Um, and previously, in the beginning, I was planning to go in the medical field, but somehow the autism, and the, like the autism support and services uh, was very interesting. It's a very, in Ethiopia, this is a very foreign concept. Not a lot of people know about it. So for me to come to the U.S. and learn more about it and and um, be able to provide such kind of support for those students who need the support uh, was something that I wanted to do, and I kept pursuing it. And now, after about three, four years, I became the program director of the college internship program, and I've been I've been there since then, and I love working there. Are you hearing more from 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 Are you hearing from more students with, with autism? To, are you hearing from more students with autism today than in the past? Huh, that's, that's a good question. Well, um, it depends. Uh, um, but if you look at it from the general. Um, like, you know, um, spectrum of it. There, there are more people that are being diagnosed and we are hearing more and more about autism nowadays than before. Um, yes, it's true. We are getting more uh, inquiries as far as our support and our services from different families, uh, ed consultants and so forth, uh, feeder schools. Uh, but um, 
I don't. I'm not sure if it is just be uh, uh, the the years are telling us more people are inquiring about it, or it's just in the past that not a lot of people knew about it, and and there were not enough resources. But I think nowadays there more people are no aware of it, and uh, more services are available, so more people are willing to reach out and ask more questions and um, and come to our programs, such as, uh, programs such as ours. Mm -hmm. What types of careers do students with autism envision? Well, uh, every student that comes to our program come with different uh, ideas and different passion for a career. Um, we may have students who wants to be um, musicians, or we may have some who want to be an artist. So um, it really depends on um, the experience of that student growing up. It really depends on the passion that student have. Typically, our student population tend to gravitate towards something that requires a lot of detail-oriented type of stuff, or something that has kind of repetition. Um, we've had students who worked on uh, music, like you know, uh, studios such as like this that um, that they intern there and they love working there. We have students that work at San Francisco Airport. We have students that work at um, local grocery stores and so forth. Uh, so it all depends. Uh, of the students who wants to do what they want. And there, there are some students who just want to focus on academics. They just want to do academics. They don't want to do any kind of career-related stuff. So Kai, could you tell us more about the program? Let's say um, one of our viewers or their parents or family members or friends are interested in uh, becoming involved in the college internship program. How would they do that and what would that involve? It's a very good question. Um, so when a parent is interested to uh, be part of our program uh, and they want to bring their student to our service, to our program, the, the one of the first thing they will do is typically they will go online to our website, um, www.collegeinternshipprogram.org, and they apply online. Uh, there's a lot of questions in that uh, application, um, and then that information goes to the national office, uh, to our admission mm -hmm. coordinators, uh, and they would look at the person, the application process, and then they'll invite them to submit more information, like such as psyche evals and parent questionnaires or some sort of um, uh, reference letters from, like, you know, whether it is uh, teachers or mm -hmm. uh, doctors, something like that. And then, uh, and then the national office will take a look at that information and make sure that that student, uh, uh, our, we are fit for that particular student. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, our admission person will reach out to the family and will invite the family to come for an uh, interview process or tour if they would like to. Um, some parents would prefer to tour our sites before they even apply for the program, but mm -hmm. uh, once they come, uh, we will interview them. Uh, the interview process happens throughout by um, all of our staff, uh, meaning like you know the department heads, um, mm -hmm. and then in our clinician as well, and myself. After the interview, uh, I will meet with all my staff, uh, the clinicians, and and uh, and try to see if we can determine if we are the right fit for that student. And once we determine we are the right fit for the program, uh, we are the right fit for that uh, particular student, we will offer the parents an admission uh, for our, to our program. Uh, Process typically gets uh, takes I'll say from the process of the parents mm -hmm. submitting the application uh, uh, to the point the student comes to our program. I want to say about like a one month process. Uh, not to say each day there's uh, some mm -hmm. process happening, but typically takes about a, a month. Um, we do have clients from the regional centers, uh, whether it's the East Bay or mm -hmm. Golden Gate or some other um, cities. But uh, when that is, if a student is the regional center client, then the process takes a bit longer because now we have to deal with a third party. Um, but other than that, typically that's what happens during the interview process. Um, our program, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is a very comprehensive program. We have different departments. The departments are, uh, we have the wellness department, mm -hmm. we have career academics. Um, we do have the social skills department. Uh, we do have the um, residential life skills department. Uh, these five departments are the core areas we believe our students need a lot of support. Um, and then when our students come to our program, they pick whether they want to do, uh, whether it is academic path or career path, and once mm -hmm. they pick that path, we would continue to support them in that path. Um, we also have this particular uh, sort of support we provide to our students called the C-STEP program, uh, which mainly focus on the career piece, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that program mainly focuses on like you know career, career uh, assessments, uh, resume building, 
uh, disclosure letters, um, information such as uh, shadowing uh, jobs, mm -hmm. meeting with the prospective employers, and so forth. Um, and then just very hard, like, you know, very career focused uh, support for our students because sometimes when a student comes to our program, once they graduate from high school, We've had students who don't want to deal with any kind of academics for the time break. Right. <laughs> for the yes. time, they just want to exactly. take a break. Uh, and uh, once they come to our program, they say, let's just focus on career for now, and then we support them in that. Very good. Yeah. So, uh, are most of the clients referred by the regional centers, mm -hmm. or are there other uh, groups such as the uh, DOR? Mm -hmm. Or are they individually referred? Are they referred by counselors? Or tell us more about where your people actually do come from. Good question. Uh, typically, our students come from um, events that we host on our sites. Mm -hmm. uh, we have experienced CIP weekends where we have uh, sort of like an open house where we invite parents and ed consultants or, or psychiatrists and so forth to come and take a look at our site. Um, and and then uh, from there, some parents will say, "Oh, this is great," and then let's apply for it. Uh, we do have regional centers that will refer mm -hmm. students to our program, um, and then also parents connecting with other parents. And you know, I do believe our programs uh, we've had we've been seeing a lot of success with our students. So of course, parents will tell other parents because um, it's a tight niche with families who have kids in the spectrum. They really connect. Then if they don't know each other, they probably yeah. go to the same events and so forth so they've seen each other often in some place in, that, in some shape or form so during those kind of events they mm -hmm. will reach out to them and say hey i can i have heard about college internship program my son goes there or my daughter goes there and this is the success we've seen so far so you might want to check them out mm -hmm. so in such a way we do get a lot of referrals from families as well excellent mm -hmm. is there a typical profile of uh, a, a successful person in the college internship program uh, our success is determined uh, not by what we give the students, it's more of our success is does the student who comes to our program reach the goal that he came in or she came in to, to achieve when they came to our program. So that's how I typically okay. uh, determine the success with our students. Understood. In most in most cases we do reach our student, the students do reach their goal. Um, typically our students when they come to our program they really want to get to that goal they want to mm -hmm. because that's their dream that's but that's what they want to uh, that's uh that's what they wanted to do for a long time so when we support them in that area and they reach that goal i think it's, it's definitely a rewarding thing for not just for me or for the student it's just the whole community staff and employers and so forth so um the typical profile couldn't be anything from a uh, student getting a job that they wanted mm -hmm. all along or it could be getting uh, to a four-year college or having a girlfriend or a boyfriend exactly. or it, it all depends on the goal that's what set forth when they come to our program. Excellent. Yeah. Um, how large is the Berkeley program? Uh, we currently have about 18 students. Mm -hmm. uh, we are shooting for 50 mm -hmm. <laughs> soon, maybe in a, in a, in a few years. Um, we've had years where we had about 25 students and we have years when we have about 13, 14 students. Mm -hmm. uh, but currently we have about 18 students. The majority of them are male. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, for some odd reason, right now, in a, we have more boys than girls. Uh, and but I mean, sometimes we have a year when we have more girls than boys. So we are in the phase of just boys now, right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Are you currently full? Are you looking for more? Do you have like, oh, we got a waiting list going till twenty twenty or or some sort of? Uh, we variation? are not. <laughs> we are not currently full. We do okay. take. We do take uh, applicants for sure. Um, but our goal is uh, to um, our capacity at this time. Are we uh, we about thirty students? Yeah. Very very good. Yeah. Tell us about different career paths students can take in CIP. Cool. So when the student come to our program, they get to pick uh, two paths. One of them is the academic path, and the, and the other one is the career path. Um, Let's start with the academic path, and then I'll come back to the career path. So when a student comes to our, uh, they start the academic path, the first thing we want to help them with is what kind of academic course would they like to take, whether it's what, what's the academic path they're on. They want to they get just AA degree, or they don't, do they want to transfer to a four-year college, is there a specific major they're interested in. Um, from there, students will start applying to the community colleges we have around us, whether it's the Berkeley Community College or the, the Peralta system or anywhere near us. 
we typically parents typically get them started with that before they come to our program but if they didn't we will uh, actually definitely support the students and getting them enrolled getting the right class they need and so forth and once the student get gets into the right class and uh, get in, like you know get set up there we also want to reach out to the uh, program with uh, the PSSD they call it the program in service with student with learning differences we offer we will take our students there uh, make sure that they are signed up in that program because um, typically our student population needs a lot of support with extra time during exams a note taker um, whether it's a quiet room when they're taking exams uh, some students may have some tactile issues so they may need to use computer during class sessions and so forth. so we need to work um, with the disability office to make sure that our students get the right support when they go to the community colleges and when they're attending so so once that is set up our academic coordinator will continue to uh, supporting our students with tutoring uh, some uh, executive skills support which is the EF support meaning like making sure that students are staying uh, they are having a good support with the time management making sure they're turning in assignments on time are they um, getting ready to, um, for the exams and so forth on time whether they're studying ahead of time or things like that budgeting the time the right way so our academic coordinator helps our students in that way very well um, furthermore um, our academic coordinators also communicate with the professors to make mm -hmm. sure that our students are whether they're attending class or what's going on in the classroom when the students are participating kind of collaborate with the teachers as well to work as a team to make sure that our students are succeeding um, I just want to make sure that we do not do the work for the students we have we, we definitely give them uh, push them to do it themselves but we give them the right tools so that they can do it on their own because at the end of the day once they leave our program we want to make sure that they are able to do it on their own whether it's just meeting with the professors m going to the counseling office to get the necessary accom accommodations they need and so forth so in that way our academic department helps our students very well uh, that will come back to the career path so when a student comes to our program in the career path the main thing is also like you know what would you like to do like if mm -hmm. it is if you want to pursue a career what's the career that you're interested in um, some students don't know what they want to do they just don't want to do school so the other thing they want to do is some sort of career the really thing so we d use different kind of tools to assess the students um, what kind of career interest they may have whether it is um, so like there's this called Florida, Florida choices where students can log in there it's a, a, um, it's a way best information they log in there put in any information they have about themselves and this um, website will kind of assess the students kind of interest and so forth and at the end they'll say you are more it seems like you're interested more in like you know IT related thing mm -hmm. or or social services type of things and that way uh, our students start to find some of the interest they may have uh, to pursue in the career setting so once the student get that get to that stage we will um, work with our students with creating a resume um, connecting with previous employers so that they can give them some sort of references um, also um, reaching out uh, writing disclosure letters some students may have issues to do to disclose their uh, autism uh, mm -hmm. but it's important that like you know they do it but you know we don't force them to do it so we help them with that cover letters and so forth we do a lot of interview skills training whether it's we record them with, like you know have a mock interviews and record that and then we'll watch it together and then say kind of work on the areas that they need to improve on um, job um, job interview readiness whether it's uh, um, having the right attire how to iron a shirt how to put on a tie and so forth um, and then also meeting with uh, like you know prospective employers uh, connect with them educate them about our students and our population this, uh, we serve um, meeting with um, different like um, support group not necessarily employers but someone who can lead us to prospective employers uh, and and so forth so in that way we help our students to be more uh, ready for career employments and so forth so it's a two different path we offer for students in addition while we offer the students this particular services whether it's academic or career we also have the social skills uh, area mm -hmm. which is also a very core component of our service because a student who does not have uh, who may have a very uh, beautiful resume and 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 in beautiful cover letter may have a beautiful exactly. attire and maybe have a good social interview skills and so forth if they lack the social skills I mean they may have a hard time maintaining the jobs so and that way we help our students with the social school department our wellness department helps our students with anxiety management eating healthy 
uh, exercises and so forth. And our residential department helps our students with tidiness, cleanliness. When you go to a job interview, how tidy mm -hmm. it should be, like in brushing teeth and so forth. So it's a very comprehensive support for our students and such, right? Very, very impressive. Thank you. From all that I've heard, Gab, this program, uh, college internship program, sounds like it would be really beneficial, particularly to our viewers in the Bay Area, but also our viewers in the other areas that college internship program handles. So now the big question is, how much does it cost and who pays for it? <laughs> well, um, it's not cheap. Uh, not cheap meaning right. that, not just for CIP. Right, uh, yes. Providing any kind of support for our student population, whether it's through CIP or other programs, and generally it's a very expensive program. Pretty expensive. Uh, this is, um, our program um, costs somewhere in areas of like about b between fifty-five to sixty-five thousand something to that area a year. Mm -hmm. um, um, that's I want to say that's somewhere the average cost within uh, like you know other programs out there who provide similar services. Yes, um, it's not cheap, definitely. Uh, when, but but when parents come to our program when they say, "Oh, it's just too expensive." Um, my response typically is yes, I know it's, it's, it's not cheap, but um, I typically see it as an investment. Um, it's really, our students need this support, whether it's with us or somebody else. Um, and when, if our students get this support early on, uh, all the services such as this will definitely make our students become more independent as they age, uh, when they get to the 30s and 40s, because mm -hmm. such services really it teach them the skill to be independent, live on their own, and eventually that needs to happen for us in population. Some may need some sort of support from someone for the rest of their life. Just mm -hmm. could be, that could be the reality of it, but still, for a student to be able to advocate for themselves, whether it's in a school setting or at a workplace setting, it's very important, and for us to teach Definitely. them how to do that, I think is a very cool investment and, and important as well. Um, also, we do have the regional centers that fund our program as well. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, most of our students are funded by the regional centers. So just to clarify that, mm -hmm. if some uh, uh, student is referred through the regional center, the regional center's funding would cover that either in uh, large part or totally? Well, the regional center does not fund, no, does not cover, does not cover the housing piece. The housing piece means the rent. Right, but we do have services within the apartment, like you know, cooking, cleaning, roommate meetings, grocery shopping, and so forth. That part is covered through the regional center, but when it comes to the rent piece, uh, parents typically pay for that. Understood. I understand that you're originally from uh, Ethiopia. That's Can correct. you tell us about your experience about uh, the autistic community in Ethiopia and you know how it's received and such? Well, <laughs> um, so. I grew. I was born and raised in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and I came to the U.S. Uh, in the year 2000. Um, growing up, the the term autism, or whether it's Asperger's, or learning differences, anything like that, uh, it's, I've never heard of it before. Uh, actually, the first time I heard of it is actually when I came to the U.S. Um, so, as far as I know, when I was growing up, when someone is in the spectrum and they have some sort of social behavioral issues or whatever the typical uh, behavior of an autistic person is um, that is considered as someone has some mental disability or something mm -hmm. like that and they typically might take them to some sort of mental health institutions and things like that uh, but the last time I went there it was the, the beginning of this year in January um, I was actually very surprised to witness uh, this mother who have a child in the autism spectrum who uh, I, I believe she lived, she used to live in the U.S. and moved back to the Ethiopia, and she was shocked to see that there are many uh, young adults in the spectrum that were not getting any kind of services in the autism spectrum, uh, and whether it is through the government or mm -hmm. private entities. So she opened up this private program um, that helps students in the spectrum. I, I believe she's working on right now more of in the younger age between, I want to say between the five to 10 or something like that. But she's been highly involved. She's been advocating, whether it's in the local level or somewhere in the, in, 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 uh, sort of like in the government level. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been, uh, actually she's been getting sponsored with different big companies to fund her program. But um, uh, it actually makes me really, really happy 
to see that um, programs such as hers is being established in Ethiopia because even today, um, if you go to the different parts of Ethiopia, the term autism or Asperger's, mm -hmm. we don't even have an Amharic, that my yeah. native language for Amharic, we don't have a native la term for it. That tells you how much is an, how much it is unknown. So, but uh, but every every action, everything starts from somewhere, and this person has started it, and she's doing a, an amazing work, uh, an amazing um, amazing um, results have been shown up. So I do believe things are changing in Ethiopia when it comes to autism, and um, uh, I'm definitely going to be part of that change for sure, uh, and and see. Um, this student population we have in Ethiopia and the autism spectrum get the support they need. Mm -hmm. It's really good to hear that, uh, Kaeb, that even in the farthest flung portions of the world, uh, some of the poorest places, things are changing and things are getting a little bit better. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, I think that's about it for now. Uh, very uh, glad that you were here. And I think the very last thing would be, um, if our viewers are interested in finding more about the college internship program, what's the best way of doing that? I think the best way to do it is to go to our website, uh, www.collegeinternshipprogram.org. Um, cool. That will give them more information uh, from our national side. And, and they could always come to our site. We are located in downtown Berkeley, uh, and we can give them tours, meet our students and staff. Um, we welcome everyone. And for our final segment, we have a familiar face in a new light. Uh, Stacy Kennedy uh, is now going to be our cultural correspondent. One of the things that we at Ascend encourage our members to do is to become involved in cultural activities, either participants or attendees. And uh, this new segment with Stacy is going to tell us all about that. Take it from there. Hello. Thank you, Keith. Hi, Will. Hi. Um, okay. <laughs> good, good to see you again. Likewise. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, today is Halloween, obviously, and I'm a big fan of Halloween. I am have a headset on that's Maleficent. Makeup will come later. Um, some of the uh, events, well, definitely there's a lot of events um, happening t today, tonight. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple events that happened in the past week. It, there was a Back to the Future party that... Will Burnick and some other um, uh, odd pe friends from the autism community uh, went to, and it took place at the Horizon Score Bar. And what it was, is there's people who dressed up as Marty or whoever was in the characters in Back to the Future. There's a big clock. Um, we took pictures too. And then um, there was like the setup of the under the s enchantment under the sea. Um, that happened in number two, and there was like a guitar. There was a stage. That you know, it was it was all pretend, but it looked like Back to the Future. It looked just like in the movie, um, and they were showing these slideshows of the movie. And so yeah, October twenty first, um, twenty fifteen is when Marty, right, or Doc, you know, took went back or not went back they went forward in time to october 21st 2015 um and then now that's actually the past now um but anyhow it was a great it was a great setup a great theme and a great party and um and from what i understand best buddies had had a um costume party or halloween get together too but you probably know more about that will they they actually did they, they actually did have a Halloween party mm -hmm. at USF last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Everyone went. Everyone dressed up in costumes. Mm. Well, that's that's what I love about like Halloween. There are those even neurotypicals will you know still have a kid inside them wanting to still dress up. But I especially love how um, our organization or community you know still likes to dress up and be creative. You know, I still do. Um, and to. Uh, T to finalize it, um, my show, the show I'm in, the Barbary Coast Review, that's playing at the Balance Soir on t that's 2565 Mission Street. We have two performances left, so get get your tickets online, and hope to see you there. So two more t uh, performances of the Barbary Coast Review. Um, the story about the San Francisco Gold Rush and the earthquake. And lots of fun songs in it that are 
parodized by uh, San Francisco local bands. When will those two performances be, Stacey? They will be, okay, the last two performances, um, November 5th. So they're the last two Thursdays, November 5th and November 12th. Doors open at 7, and the show starts at 8. Also, I, I just want to mention, um, uh, every Saturday evening, our students get together and uh, do this really fun activity called the Pathfinder. It's sort mm -hmm. of like a D&D type of uh, um, game. I guess you can call it a game, and students get together. They kind of sort of act the, 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 the game, and each week they have different theme. I think this week is sort of like a Halloween theme. Yeah. So anybody who's interested in that, I mean, they can definitely reach out and see if we can Great. collaborate and to have everybody be part of that Pathfinder game. And students love it. They are, very few students miss that um, game, so it's, it's fun. Oh, great to hear. Yeah, thank yeah, you. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stacy. <laughs> and again, we'll be looking forward to you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. so, well, everyone, this is our show for the week. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. I'm Kaev. Stacey Kennedy. And this is Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until we talk again, have a great week. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs>